almost any time I eat anything, it makes me feel a little bit guilty. Not because of concerns about my weight or my health, although those concerns do arise from time to time, but because eating the processed store-bought food common to my culture makes me feel inauthentic, a phony, a cheat. What would I do if there were no stores, farms, or factories? What would happen to me if I were somehow dropped off in the wilderness without civilization and left to fend for myself with only the resources allotted to me by the planet? How many of the foods in my diet would I actually be equipped to procure on my own as a mammal in the wild? I'm guessing virtually none. Let's start with meat, for example. I seriously doubt I'd be able to successfully hunt anything. It's hard for me to believe after all my generations of carefully cultivated laziness that there is any other animal on earth that would be dumb enough and frankly unambitious enough to let me catch it sitting still. <laughs> and if I did manage to trap myself some kind of creature, would I be able to kill it? Well, I'm not sure how much that even matters, because assuming I did find some way to wrest the breath out of the thing, I'd still be left standing there with a big mound of fresh roadkill in my hands, trying to figure out how on earth I was going to shave it or peel it or whatever the hell it is that one does next. And then there would be the problem of preparing it. And from what I gather, that shit about rubbing two sticks together doesn't ever come off quite as easy as it sounds. So I suppose there's fishing to consider, but I have tried that before, and I can promise you that even with the fancy equipment and the bait, there's no guarantee you'll ever get one of them out of the water. I saw that Tom Hanks movie where he gets stuck on a remote island and masters the ancient art of spear fishing in three days flat. Yeah, right. I'm sure he had to rehearse longer than three days just to convincingly pretend he was actually spearing a fish. I can't even imagine how long it would take me to figure out how I was going to fashion myself a spear to begin with. It helps in those situations to have a prop department. Not to mention the amount of strength, agility, and focus one must surely lose after going those first few days without food. And I can only anticipate the same array of difficulties in throwing rocks at birds. So it probably wouldn't take me very long to decide that I'd be better off as a vegetarian. But I can't automatically assume that my newfound au naturel relationship with vegetables would really go that much more smoothly. I haven't the foggiest notion about how anyone goes about growing anything. I wouldn't even know where to get any seeds if I couldn't go ask the nice lady at the local garden store. And then where would I plant them? How long would I have to wait? What if they didn't grow? What would I eat while I was waiting for them to grow? I saw what happens to my dad's tomatoes, man. It's not obvious. You do the slightest little thing wrong and you starve to death. Not that my father starved to death, but he was lucky enough not to be on his own in the wild at the time of his great tomato experiment. And I seriously doubt it's any easier to find and cultivate beans, nuts, rice, grains. So I guess I would probably wind up having to become an opportunistic gatherer of some kind. Which brings me to fruits and berries and such, which at least are kind and decent enough to grow on their own and sit still until you pick them. And I guess I could even walk around long enough to eventually find some. But then, how are you supposed to know which ones are poisonous? And why the hell are there even ones that are poisonous? Is Mother Nature trying to systematically exterminate everyone who didn't do their fruit and berry safety homework when they were little? If so, there's going to be a lot of us in trouble. Should Dole ever go out of business? I also saw that movie about the hippie kid who went to live off the land in Alaska. He was a smart kid, and he had a great big book about leaf and berry varieties, and he still ate some of the wrong ones, and then he died. <laughs> Not that I'd have any fantasies about walking to Alaska anyway. When I read about early human tribes migrating over thousands of miles in search of food, it always seems like it takes them several decades to do it. And I wouldn't even know which direction to start walking in. I mean, okay, I don't know exactly where anything indigenously grows, but I, I'd guess that if I went far enough south, I'd eventually run into more recognizable fruits. Or if I went far enough north, there would hypothetically be trees full of maple syrup standing around. But even if I made one of those treks surviving who knows how along the way, I'd probably just arrive in a Florida swamp to find out that the fruit wasn't in season, or freeze to death while I stumbled around licking random trees in the Canadian wilderness. So let's check the scores so far. No meat or fish, 
No veggies, no fruits, nothing that grows, runs, swims, or flies. What else is there? I suppose dairy is a food group, but somehow I just can't see myself trying to find a wild cow and then convincing her that she should let me squeeze her tits into my mouth without caving my face in with her hoof. Ditto for any other animal. I'm just going to assume that they're all fairly protective of their breasts. And then I'll bet they all keep a close eye on their young, too, which doesn't bode well for my potential career as an egg thief. But that's just as well, since I don't know where to find eggs either, except at the tops of tall trees that I wouldn't know how to climb. So what would provide any kind of nourishment that is possible for someone as modernized, read, disabled as I am to acquire? I hate to have to say this. I really do. I really do, and that part isn't even on the page. But the only thing still popping into my mind at this point is bugs. <laughs> would I eat bugs? Could I eat bugs? Not really sure. I mean, I, I'd like to think that I could you know, rise to the occasion if it were life or death, but it's pretty challenging to imagine, okay? They say that you swallow a certain amount of bugs in your sleep during your lifetime anyway. I, I guess I'd have to hope that I could survive on that amount. <laughs> Maybe I could try to sleep more. <laughs> We all know that's not a realistic strategy. I've been hiking and camping plenty of times and never once woken up feeling mysteriously full. <laughs> Besides knowing nature's established track record of cruelty, there are probably also several kinds of poisonous bugs in my immediate environment just waiting for the chance to crawl into my last supper. I do like snails as a general rule. I've never had to eat them raw without the hot butter and garlic playing soothing notes on the keyboard of my taste buds, and I certainly haven't eaten them while they're still alive. But at least they move pretty slow, so if I were lucky enough to share their natural habitat, wherever that is, I'd have plenty of time to figure out how I was going to kill them. <laughs> I gotta tell you, though, even with that little fork they give you at nice restaurants, it's not always easy to fish them out of the shells without tearing them to bits. I know, in theory, that as a homo sapiens, I should be able to get at them with a small stick. But off the top of my head, I'd be worried that a stick small enough to probe a snail shell would also be small enough to snap on the first 50 tries. <coughs> so now I've exhausted all the categories of edible things that I'm aware of, and I haven't exactly composed a menu here. I have this picture in my head of myself slamming a snail shell into a rock until it shatters and then licking the snail carcass off the side of the rock. For the record, I'd be prepared to do that once or twice to live. How many times would I have to do it to get full? So after careful consideration, I think I would ultimately just give up on eating. I would remember that I read somewhere how a human being can live for a few weeks on water alone, and then I would try to find a river where I could drink to my heart's content and live out my final few weeks with some kind of peace and dignity. Who knows? Maybe I'd be lucky enough to be sitting there when a dead salmon floated by. <laughs> Sashimi! I would say to myself. At least my last dining experience is going to be a pleasant one. But the reality is probably much less glamorous. My final meal is more likely to be prepared using my bloody fingers to cake some grass and unidentified tree sap onto a lump of smushed snail smear. I'd swallow it bravely, trying but failing to relish the morsel, and then I would stagger dazed over to the riverbank for a refreshing drink to cleanse my palate. And in that drink, I would most surely contract jardiasis, the infection common to hikers who consume untreated river water, the jardiasis would present itself in violent diarrhea, severe abdominal pain, and, ironically, dehydration. I would lie there for a couple more horrific days, rapidly losing strength, drifting in and out of nightmares and grim hallucinations until I eventually, literally, shit myself to death. <laughs> wow, man! <laughs> What the hell is going on around here? I'm supposed to be the dominant animal in the entire food chain, and the truth is that I am totally incapable of feeding myself. What an embarrassing analysis. I actually can't name a single nutrient source that I have faith in my ability to obtain through my direct, unmediated relationship with nature. 
Are you freaking kidding me? Really? And of course, I also don't have any confidence that I wouldn't wind up being eaten myself during this little adventure. I know, again, I'm theoretically capable of using my intelligence to invent weapons, but I'm pretty sure it took a few generations to perfect that, and now it's been a few generations since we forgot that. Luckily, I do run pretty fast, but hey, that's compared to other guys trying to lose weight in the park, right? Not bears and wolves and coyotes. <laughs> Could it be that the industrialization of the food industry has finally robbed me of my ability to survive in my own natural environment? Well, maybe that's all industry really does at the end of the day. Mechanically performing all the killing and harvesting, cutting and packaging, preparation, transportation, it removes the individual almost entirely from the equation of his survival. It separates us from any first-hand knowledge of what our needs and choices literally represent. And oh shit, the food industry is just one of a thousand. How many of us know what goes into making a pair of shoes? Yeah.